everyone to the National Day of Learning, proudly presented by the Carol Kimmelman Athletic and Academic Campus and powered by Zoom. We are going to jump right into our next session, Let's Tennis. I'm Dr. Jennifer Winward, and I'm the founder and CEO of Winward Academy, and we are so proud to support the Kimmelman Campus and its national initiatives to boost college and career readiness for students around the country. Now, to give you all a little bit more information, the Kimmelman campus provides academic and athletic opportunities for tens of thousands of students and families across the United States, working with school districts to deliver computers, athletic equipment specific to this panel, lots of tennis equipment, English and math curriculum, college and career readiness resources, and also professional development for STEM instructors. Now, how are all of these projects possible? Well, they're possible thanks to incredible partners. So we want to give a shout out to the U.S. Tennis Association, the U.S. Tennis Association Foundation, Tiger Woods' charity, the TGR Foundation, and Windward Academy. And thanks as well to the generous support of the Kimmelman Family Foundation and Martha and Bruce Karsh. Now, welcome to all of you joining us today, right from schools, nonprofits, after school programs around the country. On behalf of all of us who support the Kimmelman campus, we are thrilled that you're here with us. Now, as we start our Let's Tennis panel, I first want to thank those in the community who made this panel possible. So today's National Day of Learning is powered by Zoom. And in addition to the partners I just listed is also supported by the Manitou Fund, the Jack and Gloria Kramer Family Foundation, and Toyota. So we of course want to give them a huge thank you for being an integral part of today. Now a quick administrative item. So during this panel, several representatives from the US Tennis Association Foundation are going to be available in the chat and in the Q&A to answer your questions as they come in. So please feel free to write to them if you're wondering about anything. Also, be sure to be on the lookout. The U.S. Tennis Association Foundation is partnering with schools around the country to help them build tennis programs at their schools. So for teachers who are on the call or even for students, if you want that to happen at your school, there's going to be a Google form link that's posted in the chat. And we absolutely encourage you to fill that out with more information and to show your interest. And then someone from the US Tennis Association Foundation will get in touch with you to work with your school to get that program developed. Um, one thing too, for all of the panelists who are joining us today, um, we are going to have you refer to the chat. There's going to be a link in there to be able to read their full bios. Um, but what you can see here is that we're going to hear from host Rodney Rakai. He's an Emmy award-winning actor, writer, and orator. And in his piece, he's going to be talking with Jarmir Jenkins, who is the hitting partner for Serena Williams, Jermaine Jenkins, who is a national coach for USTA player development, and also is the former hitting coach for Venus Williams, Serena Williams' sister, and for Naomi Osaka. And you'll also hear from Tara Collingswood, who is a sports nutrition consultant. So she's going to talk to you about how to eat like a champion. Um, she is a sports nutrition consultant for the UST National Campus. And then she also uh, works as a nutrition consultant for the Orlando Magic NBA team. So this is just going to be incredible, right? We're all going to learn so much. The U.S. Tennis Association Foundation has put together this incredible lineup for us. So let me first tell you a little bit more about Rodney Rakai, who's going to be hosting this session today. As I already mentioned, he's an Emmy Award winning actor, writer, filmmaker. He has hosted shows on BET, on Oxygen, and on The CW. He's been featured on VH1 and HBO, and he was even the voice of the Washington Wizards for five years. So just give me a second. I'm going to hand things over to Rodney for him to take us through this Let's Tennis panel. Let's Tennis! Psst. Hey, Let's Tennis. Yeah. 
Yeah, that's right. I said, let's tennis. Oh, so you thought because you never picked up a racket, that was going to be a problem. That's not a problem at all. First things first, my name is Rodney Ricotte. Now today, I'm here to introduce you to a fun sport, a sport that you can play with friends, and it is an absolute vibe. Of course, I'm talking about tennis, man. Now coming up, you'll hear from the hitting partners of both Serena and Venus Williams. We'll celebrate TikTok challenge, hashtag tennis every way. And we are also gonna talk about food, which by the way, can be healthy and delicious. Now they're gonna tell you that Brussels sprouts aren't good. Don't believe that, all right? It's an absolute lie. We're gonna talk to some celebrities and you'll see some unbelievable moves. Let's get ready for some fun, man. Let's tennis. Here's the trick. Life is a game where we learn ways to volley opportunity with practice. Never take your eyes off the ball. The ball is a metaphor for possibility, a rally of journey and joy, hand, eye, mind coordination. Hours spent in preparation that pays off. Never quit in camaraderie, in skill, in focus, in future, no matter what. The game is open, open for all. Wow, man, those were some moves. I honestly do not know if my body can even move like that anymore. I mean, I am getting kind of up there. You know what, enough about me. It's time to get you moving. So stand up, but make sure you are in a safe spot covering the same area you see right here, all right? You wanna be able to stick your legs out, do your little Rockettes thing here, all right? Make sure you do not knock anything over and get me in trouble, people. Let's tennis. All right, let's get after it. My name is Michael Harper. I'll be hanging out with you guys throughout the next 45 minutes doing some fun tennis moving activities. But we've got to start with a good warm up. All right, so the first thing we're going to do are jumping jacks. Ready? Here we go. 10 seconds. All right, moving right into some high knees. Get them up. Knees up, guys. Let's go. Let's go. You got this. Butt kicks. Don't have me doing this by myself. Here we go. Almost there. All right, we're gonna slow it down. We're gonna do some monster kicks. Just like that. Get a good stretch. Oh. I don't want you guys to pull anything. You know what I mean? I'm concerned about your safety. Airplanes. Leaning over just like that. Don't fall. I'm watching. I will laugh. As long as you don't. Oh, and I almost fell, just like that. Here we go. All right, so you guys can see it from the side. This way. Right here. Last one we're gonna do are called super skips. So I want you to just push up as high as you can. Ready? Up, up, and try to hold it. Three more. Last one. Good job. I'll see you in a few minutes. Did you know the US Open is the fuel for tennis? I mean, the US Open is absolutely huge and it's watched and loved by millions of people around the world. Now, money from the event supports tennis across the United States in small towns and big cities alike. I'm talking about from local parks to schools. The US Open is tennis at its absolute best. It's a New York event, which is an amazing city. And for two weeks, some of the best athletes on the planet gather on the biggest stage in tennis. Of course, I'm talking about Arthur Ashe Stadium. It's high drama day and night, and nothing, I mean nothing, beats prime time in Ash. The lights, the buzz of the crowd, the excitement. Like the rest of the world, I cannot wait to get past COVID and back to a full house.
brilliance. It's an extraordinary debut. Bianca Andreescu is a US Open champion. So as you just saw, some of the best, most athletic moves in the world take place on a tennis court. From Serena Williams to Roger Federer, it is not just about hitting a ball with the racket, it's about being a world-class athlete. So you're getting a quick sample of how much fun you can have with tennis, right? But right now, we have a QR code to lead you to a web page that tells you more and can get you involved after today. But I really think it's time to get you moving again. Let's get that heart pumping, people. Let's tennis. All right, guys, so we're gonna work on some of those same movement patterns you guys just saw. Grab two objects from around your house. I'm literally using some mulch I found over by the bushes. And we're gonna do what are called figure eights, all right? So you're gonna keep a nice wide athletic base just like you would in football or basketball or any of your other sports. And you're gonna move through these two objects in a figure eight. Ready? Let's do it. Right, let's go. Work, work, let's go, stay low. Stay low, stay wide. Let's go, guys. How you feeling? Come on, we're almost there. Keep pushing, keep pushing, keep pushing, you got this. Let's go, count down with me, 10, nine, eight, seven, don't slow down, six, let's go, five, legs burning, four, three, two, one. Good job, we'll see you guys back for the next activity. How much fun can you have with tennis? Well, the TikTok challenge, hashtag Tennis Every Way, provided a showcase of the sport in so many cool, creative ways. Hey, let's take a look. I'm pretty good at that. Did you know a tennis player runs anywhere from three to six miles during a match? I mean, sure, it depends how long a match lasts, usually anywhere from like two to five hours. No time at all, right? The point is, the top players get to moving, and right now it's time for you to move again too. Let's tennis, people. All right, guys, welcome back. So, even though we run a lot, we do it in multiple directions. This next activity is called the D-drill. I'm gonna be calling out different directions, and you're gonna accelerate forward, backwards, left or right as I call them out. All right, you guys ready to go? Wide base, here we go. Ready? Up. Come back, come back, come back, come back, back. Come back, come back to the middle. You guys with me? Left. Right. Up. Left. Back. Right. Front. Left, front, front, back, left, right. Whew. How was that for you guys? Did you guys get it done? Excellent. Being fast in tennis isn't just about the ability to get from point A to point B. Acceleration is just as important as being able to decelerate and stop. In that video, you saw my sneakers, you heard my sneakers squeaking a lot. And that's because it's super important to be able to stop on a dime so that you can change directions and get back for the next ball. So for this next activity, you guys are gonna need some help. I want you to grab three tennis balls from around your house. And if you don't have those, 
Just grab three pairs of socks, roll them up, and that'll work out just fine. That's right, I'm gonna teach you to juggle. I'll see you back here in a few. Today, you are getting a quick sample of how much fun you can have playing tennis. So we have a QR code to lead you to a web page that tells you more and can get you involved after today. It's time to get moving again. Let's tennis. Oh, hey, welcome back. Tennis can be a lot of fun. Hand-eye coordination is absolutely crucial. I'm gonna teach you guys how to juggle. I want you to find two balls around your house if you have them. If not, take a rolled up pair of socks or a few pairs of rolled up socks and we'll get this done. First thing you're gonna do is take two of the objects and I just want you to repeat after me. Toss, toss, catch, catch. Ready? Watch it happen. Toss, toss, catch, catch. Just pretend like there's a tube going straight up the middle. Toss, toss, catch, catch. How about let's try that together. Toss, toss, catch, catch. Toss, toss, catch, catch. Toss, toss, catch, catch. You guys got that? So once you've got that rhythm down, now we're gonna add the third ball, okay? And we're gonna just focus on the tossing. If you get the tossing right, the catching will happen automatically. Let's give it a shot. Toss, 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 toss. Toss, 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 toss. Toss, 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 toss. Toss, are you doing it? Let's go back to two balls, ready? Toss, toss, catch, catch. Toss, toss, catch, catch. Straight up the middle, up the tube, and out the top. Toss, toss, catch, catch. Toss, toss, catch, catch. Now that third ball, ready? Toss, 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 toss. Toss, 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 toss. All right, you guys have got it. Now you can impress your friends, you've learned a new skill, and whether you know it or not, you've gotten better at tennis. Keep practicing, I'll see you back here in a few. Plain and simple, man, tennis is fun. Exercise though, not so much. But you guys have been crushing it all day. Matter of fact, I'm trying to keep up with you. But one more important thing that we have to do is make sure that we eat healthy. Now you may find it boring, but being healthy is absolutely where it's at. So let's make it fun and let's make it taste good. That's right, my name is Tara Collingwood and I am a sports dietitian. I have worked with high school, college, and professional athletes, NBA, all kinds of people throughout my career. And I can tell you that what you put into your body in terms of the food and the beverages is going to affect your energy and your performance, not just on the field or the court, but also in the classroom. So I've got three things that you need to focus on. Timing, of course, what to eat, and how to hydrate yourself. So let's talk first about timing. I want you to eat something within an hour of getting up in the morning. Even if it's just a banana or a yogurt or just eat something, ideally have a full breakfast. But if you can just get some nutrition in first thing, that helps to get your brain going and your muscles going. Then I want you to eat about every three to four hours throughout the day to make sure that you're getting energy for those muscles and to fuel your brain in order to have the energy that you need to focus and concentrate and to perform. And when we're talking about what to eat, there's three things you want at every single meal. Carbs, protein, and some kind of a fruit or vegetable. So when we talk about carbs, bread, cereal, rice, pasta, tortillas, potatoes, all of those good things, breakfast, lunch, and dinner, have one of those at every meal. Protein could be chicken, turkey, pork, beef, fish, seafood. If you're a vegetarian, it could be, of course, tofu or some kind of a vegetarian alternative and those beans. Then we want a fruit or vegetable at every single meal as well. At breakfast, it might be all fruit. At lunch, it might be a salad or a cooked vegetable. Maybe same thing at dinner, maybe also some fruit at dinner. That's fine. Just always make sure that you're getting either a fruit or vegetable or one of each at every single meal. And then the last thing is making sure that you're staying hydrated. Anything you drink in the day will help to keep you hydrated. It doesn't have to always be water, but water, of course, is gonna be the best thing to keep you hydrated. During exercise, if you're going for more than an hour, then a sports drink is gonna be appropriate, but less than an hour, water is gonna be just fine. All right, enough talk, let's eat. I've got a really super easy recipe for you that you are absolutely gonna love, so come with me. All right, who's hungry? I have got a perfect snack for you that you can either have after school or you could even have it before or after exercise. These are five ingredient energy bites that anybody can make, they're that simple. I've got some oats here. We've got one cup of just some old fashioned oats. And then I've got 
peanut butter. And of course, if you have a nut allergy, you could always use a sun butter instead. That's gonna be a peanut-free option. And of course, I've washed my hands before we did this because I'm about to get messy here. All right, and then we've got about a half a cup of ground flaxseed, and that's gonna help to bind this all together. We've got a little bit of honey, for two tablespoons of honey, for a little bit of sweetness, and then I don't know about you, but I love chocolate. So I've got some chocolate chips here that I'm gonna put in here as well. Now, if you don't like chocolate, you can always use some dried fruit if you want instead. You could use some dried tart cherries that I love, or maybe some raisins, some dried apricots, whatever you want. Um, you can also add, if you want this to be a little bit more high protein, you could add some protein powder to this as well. And it's actually not gonna change the consistency that much. You could start out with maybe half a scoop. You could either use chocolate or vanilla, whatever flavor you like, or you could even use strawberry, kind of make this little PBJ. That might be a little bit exciting. All right, so I've got this mixed up. Now, ideally, in the real world, we would put this into the fridge for about 15, 20 minutes just to let that peanut butter kind of get a little bit cold to make it easier to roll into balls. But I'm gonna do it live here, so here we go. So you can always take your hands, again, I've washed my hands really well. You can always take your hands and sort of mash it up a little bit better. So now I'm just gonna take some of this, make it into some balls. Now, depending on what size you want, I like kind of a little bite-sized ball. I'm gonna put it right into my Tupperware to make it easy for me to grab and store them. These can easily be stored for well over a week. If you want to, there's really nothing, nothing in these that are going to spoil. So again, great for afternoon snack. You've got carbohydrates in the oats. You've got some nice healthy fats in the peanut butter. And of course, you have that sweetness of the chocolate chips and the honey. So it can just be that simple. We've got our five ingredient energy bites right here, and they're super delicious. I know I had fun making them. I hope you will too. Okay, so we laid it on the line about exercise and staying healthy, right? I mean, it's very important. I know that, you know that, and tennis can help make it all the way fun. But let's think the same way when it comes to a job. Imagine loving, I mean loving what you do. I mean, I sure do. And there are so many people who work in tennis who have a passion for the game, so much so that their job just doesn't feel like one. I mean, that's a way to make a living. Now you're about to hear from two brothers whose tennis skills led to unbelievably cool jobs. I'm gonna be honest here, they are in very rare air, but there are plenty of opportunities out there. I mean, you can study for a career in tennis at a college that offers professional tennis management, PTM for short, you can do that as a major or minor. Now, about those brothers. So their lives kind of sound like a Hollywood script. You got two brothers who end up working with two sisters. The sister's last name is Williams. Of course, I'm talking about Serena and Venus. But this is not a movie. This is a very, very real situation. Let's meet Jarmir and Jermaine Jenkins. Now, Jarmir has been Serena's hitting partner since 2017, and Jermaine was Venus's hitting partner for three years, then went on to coach Naomi Osaka back in 2019. Now, how did they get there? I'll let them tell the story. Take it away, Jenkins brothers. I got the opportunity to work with Venus in 2015. Um, it was a random week where she needed a practice partner um, in West Palm. So I came down with a buddy um, initially just to play golf. And I had a, I spent a weekend with Venus and met Serena as well at the time. And I did not plan on having a full-time job at the time. Um, it was just a random week of practice. And I did a good job there and it led to um, other weeks where Venus would actually ask me to come down to West Palm and practice. And I spent time with Jameer as well traveling and he was playing the US Open at the time. And I went there with him and I just sent Venus Williams a random text message saying, hey, you know, I'm here in New York. Um, let me know if you need someone to practice with. And she responded and, um, Basically, she counseled her hidden partner that um, during the time, and she gave me the opportunity to work with her at the U.S. Open as a hidden partner. And um, I think the rest was history from there. I got a text message from Jermaine asking if I would be interested in working with Serena Williams, and uh, I thought he was kidding at first. Um, but uh, yeah, it was it was an opportunity that uh, 
that I was ecstatic for. I couldn't say no. Um, after I said yes to Jermaine, shortly after that, I got a text from Patrick, who was Serena's coach, asking if I could come to the academy to train. Um, and I did about a week or two of training with them just to see if, uh, if I would fit well with the team. You know, they, they all loved me and it was a great fit. And I've been working with them since. We would have to start with our father, uh, Jackie Jenkins Sr. And uh, I mean, he was a complete hack. He picked up the tennis racket around the age of 25 years old, which led, he introduced the uh, sport to my older brother, Jackie. Um, and my brother, Jackie, went to Northwestern on a full scholarship. Um, but coming up in the years, I would just watch Jackie practice, play tennis, and I would see what tennis, how it enriched his life, um, being sponsored by uh, clothing brands. Um, also traveling uh, different cultures and just seeing the exposure that he that tennis brought to my older brother I knew I wanted that I was following in my older brother's footsteps um, Jermaine and Jackie I wanted to emulate everything that they did I wanted to do it better we had a bar that you know that was set and we had to you know at a minimum reach that bar because the standards were set so high competition runs deep in our family and uh and for me i got started just by watching these guys and what they do on the daily level and seeing you know the work that they put in my first coaching um, job was around the age of 14 or 15 where um, one of my um late great coaches back in the day ernie peterson would pay me 50 dollars um, in the summer you know, just to hit with the little ones. And um, he ha always had this uh, message that, you know, you should give back. Just through the discipline that we've learned through sports, it kind of sticks with you. Um, and so I just decided that I, I couldn't shake it. I'm always like, I'm a gym rat. I wake up in the morning and just that discipline carried over into me as a coach. And I made sure to, uh, yeah, just to stay, stay in shape and be ready for any opportunity that presents itself. And I just would like to think that an opportunity came and I was ready and I was prepared for it. I thought it was a great opportunity for both pathways. Um, uh, you know, when I stopped playing tennis, I worked in the finance field for a little bit and I felt like uh, going to UVA kind of gave me a, a good pathway to prepare for that job. Best of both worlds, great opportunity for me and it definitely put me on the path uh, to just grow in, in, in my future. Academically, you know, the sky's the limit. I mean, tennis um, provided us with the opportunities to be whatever we wanted to be in college. Um, although um, college athletics could be very demanding, so I knew I wasn't going to be a rocket scientist, um, but I did uh, have the opportunity and very thankful to major in business management. It's taken me um, places that I never thought I'd go. To actually see that process, you know, to see someone like Serena, who's number one and who has all these achievements and, and, and to see the work that she still puts in on a daily basis, you know, to, you know, it, to, to me, it's pretty mind blowing. It's pretty universal, the work ethic that it takes, the mentality that you have to have to, to, to become number one and to be great at something, you know, it's, it's you know, everyone's doing the same thing. There's no you know, um, cheat sheet to, to become great. You get to see what makes them great um, on a day-to-day -day basis. And you see that worth ethic. What you see is what you get, you know, with Venus. She's such an incredible person, an incredible human being. So um, you get to see that, you know, them outside of the uh, athletic light as well, you know. So I think that's uh, invaluable. If I was your age, you know, and if I had the opportunities that, you know, you guys have now in time, um, I would say nobody would stop me, you know, nobody would stop me. And I would say the sky's the limit, you know, so work hard every day, um, trust the people, um, you know, that are, that you're blessed to have in your circle. But um, yeah, if I was you, um, nobody would stop me. Believe in yourself, um, ask questions, uh, trust your coaches, surround yourself with people who believe in you. Um, you know, there's so many tools that we have today, YouTube, books, everything that you guys, hey, you guys have access to all the resources in the world. So take advantage of all this and um, yeah, believe in yourself.
Man, remember that message right there. That is a really, really good one. Nobody, I mean absolutely nobody can stop you. You have to make sure you surround yourself with people who believe in you though. And work hard, everybody. Work hard because not everybody will be a Jenkins brother, I admit that. But the one thing you can have in common with them is hard work. There is zero substitute for working hard. And speaking of working hard, right now it's time to get moving again. Let's tennis, people. Welcome back. So I heard you guys just met Jermaine and Jameer Jenkins. Now those guys are two of the smoothest movers I've seen on the tennis court. There's two main ways we move after we hit a ball. One is a side shuffle, and the other is a crossover. I'll show you both of them now. Side shuffle, just like you guys know from many other sports, you're just moving side to side without the feet crossing over. And a crossover step, which we use to cover larger distances, you're gonna make sure that that front leg crosses over the back leg whenever you're going either direction. Ready? Cross, 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 cross. This next activity is gonna be a challenge. You guys get to get two lines, about six feet apart, just like I have here, and you're gonna see how many you can touch in 30 seconds, all right? Your call, you can use the shuffle or you can use the crossover step. You guys ready to go? Let's do it, ready? Wide base. The clock starts now. One, two, three. Let's go. Where my side shuffle is at? Come on, guys. Push. Push. See how many you can get. Let's go. Don't quit now. Come on. You're right there. You're right there. You're right there. Let's go. Side shufflers. We're 20 seconds in. We've got 10 seconds left. If you're crossing over, let me see that work. Let's go. Five, four, Three, two, time. Good work. How many did you guys get? Great job. We'll see you back here in a few minutes. There are many big names in tennis, and there are many big names who love and support tennis. Every year, I mean every year at the US Open, celebrities come out to enjoy the matches and support the USTA Foundation. Check it out. I just always love coming to the U.S. Open. It's so big, it's such a grand event. People just come to have a good time, enjoy the sport. is always so fabulous. The crowds are great. It's just a real special time. At the Holland Junior Tennis and Education Program, I get a lot of uh, great private coaching. They also help with academics. I've had a tutor that helped teach me physics, made me pass that class. I feel like I've already benefited so much already. We're very excited about being part of this continued effort. Let's make this a great evening for the NJTL and for the kids. Totally spontaneous auction item. Lunch with Alec, Baldwin, and me. Sold for 25000 I'm just elated to see how the USTA Foundation, what they are doing for so many. They're leveling the playing field. And that's so little to ask for and to know the great benefits that can come from that. So we are almost out of time, but we have saved the best for last. Now, you thought all those other drills were fun, right? I bet you you did. We got one more move, people. It's time, let's tennis! All right, we made it. You guys still with me? Great. I think by now you guys are ready to start moving like tennis players. But before we do, I just want to introduce a few key strokes. On your dominant side, which will be the right side for you right-handers, and the left side, for you left-handers, that stroke is gonna be called the forehand. And it's just gonna look something like this. Just a nice, easy swing, okay? The backhand side, put your two hands together, and I just want you to swing forward like that. And that'll be on your non-dominant side. Again, that's the left side for you right-handed players, and the right side for you left-handed players. The other stroke we're gonna introduce is called the volley. You're gonna come forward, and you're just gonna high-five a ball right out of the air, all right? Super easy term. 
When we get to our tennis lessons, I'll explain it to you a little bit differently, but for now, just think of it like a high five, all right? We're gonna do the same directional drills we did earlier when I was calling out left, right, up, back. But this time, whenever you go to your dominant side, you're gonna hit a what? Yeah, a forehand. When you go to your backhand side, or your non-dominant side, you're gonna hit a backhand. And whenever I say forward, you're gonna run up and you're gonna give me a high five. Deal? All right, let's do it. Ready? Wide base, feet moving. We ready to rock? Let's get it. Forehand, good job guys. Backhand, good job. Forehand, backhand, volley. Good job, good job. How we feeling, how we feeling? Forehand, ah, forehand again, forehand again. See, you guys are playing tennis before you know it. Backhand, let's go, let's go. There it is, I didn't even call it and you guys got that one right. Couple more, let's go, forehand. Are we ready, are we ready? Backhand side. My gosh, US Open, I can see it coming. Let's go, forehand side. Let's go guys, 15 more seconds, backhand. Volley. Back up, back up, back up, volley. Back up, back up, back up, volley. Oh, you guys are rock stars, 10. Let's go, forehand. Let's go, we're almost there, backhand. Backhand again. Last three, forehand. This is it, backhand. Volley. You guys are rock stars. Hey, I had a blast hanging out with you guys today. Hopefully you learned a few things and you're moving more like a tennis player. I'll see you next time. Good luck. Man, we had so much fun with the TikTok challenge. Hashtag tennis every way. Your TikToks were incredible. I might have to follow a couple of them, for real. Now we hope you had fun moving and we hope you learned that tennis can be anyone's sport. Remember, this was just a quick sample. So this QR code will take you to a webpage that tells you more and can get you involved after today. So take that next step because there are so many ways to get involved and have fun with the game of tennis. One great way is through the USTA Foundation's National Junior Tennis and Learning Network. We call them NJTLs. They are a fun mix of learning and tennis and it is a great way to start. So scan that QR code and get ready to discover. Discover ways to have fun, get healthy, Matter of fact, discover more about yourself. That's one of the best things that tennis can help teach you, is how to be a better version of you. Listen, I am your guy, Rodney Burkai. Thank you so much for spending time with us today. Now, let's kick it back to Dr. Jennifer Winward. And remember, people, us tennis. Thank you so much to Rodney Rakai and to the USTA Foundation for putting all of that together for us. The interviews were incredible. I just was sitting here thinking that, you know, those um, energy balls that were being created, those would be perfect to use as snacks. Maybe if you have a big exam or maybe if you're taking the ACT or SAT and you get that one 10 minute break in the middle, right? Something like that is so great to give you that sustained energy, right? So remember that a lot of these tips and everything that they shared with you today about tennis that you can apply to other sports. And also, of course, you can apply to your academics. So again, Rodney, that was incredible. Thank you again for taking us through everything, getting us fired up about the world of tennis. Another quick reminder, oh, someone just wrote in the chat, I love tennis. That's so fun. That's great to hear. Um, now remember, really important, I know that we mentioned this at the beginning, but for the teachers on the call, the students on the call, the USTA Foundation is putting out an incredible effort to work with schools around the country to help them build tennis programs in local communities. So teachers, administrators, again, students, I think that you should nominate as well, right, if this is something that you would want to bring to your school. If you're interested in one of these tennis programs, you can either email, we'll put it in the chat, it's NJTL, right, National Junior Tennis and Learning, NJTL, at USTA.com. A member of the USTA Foundation will get in touch with you right away. Um, or remember that also in the chat, we're putting a link to that Google form that you can actually fill out and give more information about your school. Same thing. We just want to give you lots of ways that you can get in touch with the USTA Foundation so that you can look for ways to build these programs at your schools. Um, now for the National Day of Learning, I know kind of our first three sessions were back to back to back. You only had 10 minute breaks in between. 
But before this last session, uh, we are giving you a little bit longer um, of a break because we know that we want you to get up, move around, right? Maybe practice some of those moves that you just learned, maybe even make that uh, those energy balls. Um, I think actually we'll look to see if there's a way we can put the recipe for those in the chat. I don't know if someone from the UST Foundation has that, but I see some of you have asked for that. So we'll definitely get that to you if we can right now. Um, if we can't get it to you right now, we will make sure that we include it in our follow-up uh, that we send to everyone, right? So I do want to make sure for all of you who have registered for today, whether you've attended this panel or all of the panels, we are going to follow up. We're going to send resources about opportunities for summer for teens, internship programs, teen programs, anything that can help get you exposure to career opportunities, right? We're all about it. So everyone at the Kimmelman campus, all of the partners were working together to put together that resource guide. Um, you'll also be able to find more information. So those same emails, excuse me, those same links will keep in there. And then because so many of you have asked in the chat, we will include the recipe for those energy balls as well. Um, and I want the recipe too. So this is great. And we'll make sure that everybody has access. Now, as I mentioned, you do have a longer break. So you have about 45 minutes before the last session. We want you to get up. We want you to be able to eat, go outside, stretch, move around. It's a really important part of today as well, right? That you're taking care of yourself, taking those breaks. So in 45 minutes, you're actually going to have three options for the last session. So let me go ahead and share my screen again. And um, while I'm sharing my screen, please look to the chat as well, because you're going to see the links for the different sessions that you can sign up for. So starting in 45 minutes, again, take this break, take this time to recharge. Again, you can practice some of those moves. See you back in 45 minutes. The first option is to attend a college chat. So we have three incredible first-generation college students who are gonna answer questions and share more about their journeys, about challenges overcome, about tips for teens, about what it was like their freshman year in college, right? Answering questions that I know so many youth are asking about because we actually worked with schools to have students submit these questions. So option number one is that college chat, which is open to anybody. Then for the middle schoolers who are participating, there are two options for some STEM creativity projects that are organized by the TGR Foundation. So you can either do a photography challenge or a parachute challenge. So again, it's a little confusing because this last session of the day has three options for you. Be sure though that if you're participating for class, right, which I know the vast majority of you are, check with your teacher if there's a specific session you're supposed to be attending. Um, and again, we are so excited you are all here with us today. Please see those links in the chat to figure out where to go next. Enjoy this 45 minute break. And again, a huge, huge thank you to the USTA tennis, or excuse me, to the US Tennis Association Foundation for putting together such an incredible Let's Tennis production. We got to learn so much about the sport and hear from these incredible people who are involved as professionals and what their experiences were. And again, it was such a great learning experience for all of us. So thank you again for being here. We'll see you back in 45 minutes at the last session of the National Day of Learning. Thanks again, everybody. We'll see you soon. Take care. Bye-bye.